Today, we will read Vilapa Kusumanjali, verse 90. Radhe Charandas, Radhe Radhe. I hope that you hear me. My voice is a little bit weak, but I will try to give my best. So, we will start. Verse 90 from Vilapa Kusumanjal. O Devi, when will I shyly lower my head in assembly? As you are requested by Lalita Devi to lovingly read some beautiful, romantic poetry to me. O oh, Devi, when will I shyly lower my head in the assembly as you are requested? by Lalita Devi to lovingly read some beautiful romantic poetry to me. I will read it a third time. O oh, Devi, when will I shyly lower my head in an assembly as you are requested by Lalita Devi to lovingly read some beautiful romantic poetry to me. There is one question which appears in me when I'm reading, when I meditate on these words of Raghunadas. And the question is, how long he is absorbed in his meditation and how long he is absorbed in vision when he was writing these simple lines, two lines in these words. How long it took to him? Because we are reading one, two, three times, four, five, ten times these words. And it can be half minute, one minute, two, three, five, if we deeply meditate. But how long it took for Raghunath, first from his sadaka wish, to meditate on these words, to pray for these words, and then by Radhika's mercy, to attain direct vision of this particular pastime. And I'm thinking, really, maybe in his Sada Kavesh he was absorbed few hours by praying this prayer. Maybe he took a few days. And then, when vision appears, how long it was? One minute? Ten minutes? Few hours? Few days or maybe few weeks? He was absorbed in this Lila. 
And then when the vision finished, he just wrote this verse. I was thinking about this. Because it's not that he, for me, it's not possible for him that he just wrote one verse, second verse, third, five, uh, 104 verses in a few hours, and this is my book, and that's okay. No, it must took a long time. Because these words and words are result of his this deep, Meditation and direct vision. So it, I was thinking like this, and I wanted to share with you about this. Because each word here very precisely explain the feelings of Raghunath, his desire, what he wants to attain, and very precisely, with full emotions, he is writing these words, describing the situation on which he is meditating. And from this, we can understand his humble feelings and deep feelings. Because from the beginning, he says, when will I shyly lower my head in an assembly? So this is the Manjari mood. Radhika is in the assembly of her girlfriends. And some specific situation is coming where completely naturally Raghunath, like Tulsi Manjari, is behaving. He shyly lowers his head very humbly in the assembly of Radhika and her girlfriends. And then he's saying why he's acting completely natural, naturally like this. This is natural example of natural humility, which is coming from spiritual identity. And he is explaining because. Lalita requested you in front of others to lovingly read to me, to teach me your beautiful romantic poetry. So Tulasi is feeling very shy, embarrassed little bit. And of course, because of that, she doesn't refuse the seva. She is happy to do it, but this is the normal reaction of someone who is really a spiritual person and who is really absorbed in his swarup, avish. Because humility is coming together. It's not with prema, we cannot separate each other. Because of prema, person is humble, genuinely humble, naturally humble. And because of this humbleness, prema is entering in his heart. So this is the natural behavior of someone who is really spiritual and this is the natural behavior specific of those who are in manjari bath 
This is very delicate behavior of Radhika's maidservants. So, I think and I feel really that Raghunath took a long time. I don't know how long, but to meditate, to pray, and finally to attain this direct vision and be absorbed a long time in this direct vision. And when the vision finished, with his feeling of loving separation, out of pain of separation, he wrote these words. O Devi, O Rade, O my Swami, you are so beautiful. You are so playful. You are so sweet. When will I shyly lower my head in the assembly? As you are requested by Lalita Devi to lovingly read some beautiful romantic poetry to me. Notes, please, whenever you feel something to add, just do it. I feel something. Please. Wow. Goranga Sonda, when you start talking, immediately I can go inside. Mercy of Gurudev is with you. <clears throat> so, yesterday in the sharing, I just mentioned that the Trinata P. Sunichina Sloka is not only meant for Sadaka Deha, it's also Manjari Bhav expressed. And here we also can see that again. We always want to give respect to others. We don't want to be recognized by others. I don't like the attention of others. I don't want to put myself in the center. This you can see here also. In the assembly of Radharani and her girlfriends, the situation appears that Lalita put you in the spotlight by requesting Radharani. And naturally, because of humbleness, Manjari becomes shy and lowers her head. So whenever we in Sadaka Deha, we have to listen our own glorifications, we also should lower our head and close our ears. Instead, we want to give respect to everyone else. It's so beautiful. And in the Kunja, there are many Manjaris. And every Manjari has the mood that, oh, I did just a little service. But everyone else did so great service. So many, many Manjaris, they will tell you, oh, my dear, 
Saki, you did so nice service today to Radharani, to Mohan. In the con in the conja, it may be it is okay. But when we are at home with our families, then that should not happen. Imagine this small 11 year old girl gets recognition from all the other manjaris. Oh, today you did very nice. <laughs> you know? Then the parents, the husband, they will become suspicious. Why? Why everybody talking about my wife, about my daughter, that she is so great, she did so nice? In the parakia, we have strictly to avoid that, that the spotlight coming to us in our normal life, we want to keep it secret. Nobody should notice something about what we are doing secretly. So whenever recognition comes, we also lower our head and say, no, 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 please stop talking. Don't reveal my mood and what I did tonight, last night. So we want to keep it secret. Don't talk about me, never. Yeah, this is so beautiful. Thank you, my dear Rabbi. Thank you. You inspired me yesterday to choose these words because I knew but before I was, today when I was reading, some things also opened, which I never told before. And this is the mercy. And humbly we should accept that mercy. Like Gora Chandra is giving us very nice. I don't want to offend him or to put him in the situation, embarrassed situation, but this is the instructions how we should behave always aware about this even if we cannot behave but at least to be aware so notes by anantadas babaji in the previous words Tulasi learned singing from Swamini. And in these words, she wants to learn Rasika poetry from her. Swamini molds Tulasi as she wants it. Swamini molds Tulasi as she wants it. She will serve her Priyatama through this maidservant and thus make him happy. And at the same time, she blesses her maidservant with devotional service. The maid servants know innumerable arts through the training of their Sri Ishwari. I will read again. 
Swamini molds Tulasi as she wants it. According to her own sweet desire, Radhika is molding Tulasi. Because she will serve her Priyatama, Mohan, through this maidservant. And thus make him happy. And at the same time, she blesses her maidservant with devotional service. The maidservants know innumerable arts through the training of their Sri Ishwar. So this is the perfection of someone who attained perfection. And by listening about their perfection, we sadakas also slowly but surely can ripen and ripen and ripen and ultimately attain their association. Because in their association, Sadaka in her, in her Swarup, Manjari Swarup, will start to learn the more profound, more subtle art of servicing. And this art can feel, can learn, only sensitive devotees. Sensitive means that they are sensitive not on the bodily consciousness of life, but they are sensitive because they are swarups, spiritual identity, are made of feelings. Made of feelings. And Radhika is someone who is giving final touch in this modeling of feelings of her majors. So, the starting point is to have close association, intimate association with Radha, Dasi, Anu Dasi, Anu Dasi, Anu Dasi, of our Guru Manjari. We should accept position that she is the one who Radhika chose to model us. How can we come in the position of expertly serving Yugala Kishore? if we didn't pass the training, let's say training, of our Guru Manjari. So everything is starting with Sadhu Sangha. This modeling process is starting. Because this is the very specific way of bhajan and very specific way of service. Devotee doesn't do anything according to his desire, to his will. He wants to be molded. He wants the desire of his guru, guru manjari, paranguru manjari, and so, so, so on, up to Radhika. That their desire model his heart. For that we need a pure heart. And pure heart is, means modeling heart. If someone has a pure heart, he has a soft heart. 
soft. And this softness is the result of love. Nothing can soften the heart more than pure love. And when the heart is soft, like, like a clay, you know, then artists can model it. If the heart is full of holes, is very hard, then it's not possible to model it. But when the heart becomes soft, then it's easy to model it. And each of sadaka, each one of us, has to accept it. The problem is independent nature. And Gurudev is here to help us to overcome this independent nature, which is blocking our heart to become a soft. Because in this sentence, Swamini molds Tulasi as she wants it, is the key point. This is the CD, this is the perfection, not mystical power. This is perfection of existence to be modeled and to happily accept this modeling. Because I cannot model myself. How clay can model itself. No, clay needs craftsmen, artists, artists. And our Gurudev and all Gurus who are Radha Dasisas expert in this loving art. They are spiritual masters of love. Maestro of Amore. So whatever they are doing, they are doing with love, even when their words are harsh. Because they have to press a little bit more. And it's up to us to voluntarily, lovingly accept this little pressure. Because we know result. Soft, melted heart. And this soft, melted heart is so important because Gurudev wants to offer this heart to Swamini and Swamini wants to model more that heart because she wants to serve her Mohan through this soft, heartened maidservant. And there is no place for independence. And this is only natural position to be in the hands of Mahabhava who are modeling Manjari in different sevas. You can see how tender, sensitive seva is. Poetry is very tender seva. In other verses, Radhika is modeling Tulasi to play Veena, to play instruments according to her desire to satisfy Mohan. Radhika doesn't teach philosophy, logic to these small girls. Like Gorachan said, 11 years ago, come on. Which kind of philosophy? I don't care for that philosophy. I want to dance. I want to sing. I want to play instruments. I want to speak romantic poetry. Because you, 
infuse the, your words from your heart in me. And this is only possible in Vrindavan because this is the place for this kind of activities, no other activities. No, no other activities. Every, how it works, how it goes on. Every word is song and every step is dance. Why? Because it's full of Mahabhav. Everyone is in charge with this kind of pure love in Vrindavan. And how you expect from this kind of person to speak like we are speaking? No. How you expect from this person to walk like we are walking? No. They're dancing. Each movement is a dance. Each word is song, is a poetry, full of Mahabhav. Because they are touched by Radhika's pure love. They are touched. And Krishna is completely crazy because of that. So Radhika is teaching here her manjari, beloved manjari, to dance, to sing, to play instruments, and here in these words, romantic divyaras poetry. Oh, sorry, I took time. Goranga Sundara. Yes, my dear. I have one question uh, on the verse. In the, before, uh, Radhika was uh, learning to Lassi in one solitary place. And now we see here that uh, is Lalita, which is reading for Tulasi. So, no. no. Rari, Lalita is requesting Radhika. Okay. That's the point. Lalita, like Radhika Saki, is requesting Radhika, please, read some lovely poetry, romantic poetry, to Tulasi. That's the point. Okay. Mm, sorry. Okay. Is it clear now? Yeah. It, it, it's changed completely the angle of, yeah, yes, yes, understand you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Maybe some others also um, understood. Uh, so we will come to this point. We will come to this point. I want to say something. So, Goranga Sonda, he explained so nice why we have to become so pure he used so many beautiful words like delicate tender soft independent mood <laughs> how is possible <laughs> that we can serve Radharani and Mohan <laughs> have an independent nature, how the feelings of Radharani can come to us if we still have our own filter, how it can her feelings, her teachings, how it can be transferred to Mohan through my heart in a pure way if my heart is not pure if i still have a different agenda or different point of view my own 
opinions like this. So then it's the heart is not crystal clear. It is not transparent. The mood of Radharani cannot go through me without disturbance or distraction. So therefore it takes so much time to adjust and to go near to become tadatmika. Because it's so sensitive, it's so subtle, Goranga also said. It's very subtle subject. Yeah. And he used this uh, clay. If there are still some stones inside, and then it will break. Our heart also goes through the fire <laughs> after it is formed. No? And if there are still some stones, then the heart will break. So it has everything has to be really soft and pure and transparent and tender and delicate and takes time that Gurudev massaging all the impurities out of our heart. So beautiful. Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. So we are giving here hints which are coming to us that everyone meditates about the words of Baba and that we apply this. It's very important to apply. And this sentence Swamini molds to Lassi as she wants. It's not how I want. Gora Chandra said this, independence. Oh Gurudev, I want you to give me instruction which I want. I want you that you guide me as I think that is very good for me. So this is not the proper mood. And I'm very angry, very angry. I rejected you because you are not guiding me as I accept. So this is something which we have to a little bit change this mentality to correct. Because without, with such kind of independent mentality, we cannot properly follow the footsteps. But what does it mean following the footsteps? Following emotions. That is the following the footsteps. And it's very important to understand. Emotions, proper emotions for proper position, proper bow. And we can see here, Raghunath is praying and hoping that Lalita Devi will request Radhika. So it means that he is so dependent also on Radha girlfriends. She's dependent on her instructions, on Lalita's instructions. And she's 
the relishing. Tulsi is relishing the love of Sakis also. But Manjaris are not following their footsteps. They are following the footsteps, deep bhava, deep emotions of Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, Lavanga Manjari, Vilas Manjari, and so on. So it means they are not lovingly attached. They are relishing the love also of Yashoda. You know, all these nice verses where Yashoda is expressing her Vatsalya motherly love to Manjaris. They are relishing motherly love of Yashoda, but they are not practicing bhajan, following the footsteps of motherly love. This is very to make a difference. I love you. I serve you. I appreciate you. I obey to you. But I'm not following completely your emotional mood. It is because this is not my mood. And from that position, Raghunath is saying openly to Radhika, I putting your offering to become your girlfriend on my head. On my head. There is no other place where can I put your offering. But in my heart, I just want to serve you. I just want to be your shadow, not your girlfriend. And when we accept this mood, then we can start to really properly follow the mood, emotion of Manjari Baba. Asking for the mercy for everyone, from everyone, but exactly knows what I want to attain. What is my goal? Like Guru Dev saying, I want to be molded, molded by my Guru Manjari, my superior Guru Manjari, my superior, superior Guru Manjari, Parang Guru Manjari, and ultimately I want to be molded by Swami. The maidservants know innumerable arts through the training of their Sri Ishwari. They also relish, yeah, they also relish the love of the Sakis. The leader of all Sakis, Lalita Devi, asks Radhika, Saki. Read some divine Rasik poetry to Tulsi. Train her just as you like. So Swamini teaches Tulasi some poetry that she can later, at the proper moment, expertly recite to Yugalaki Shore, who are fond of good poetry. There are so many services for which poetry must be learned. Not shlokas, <laughs> not final ultimate conclusions, siddhantas. But poetry must be learned for the direct seva of Yuga Lakishore. Yeah. And who can teach this kind of point, intimate poetry? Yeah. Only Radhik.
So, because this poetry is made of the very sweet Rasik words. And each word is glorifying Radha and Mohammed. So with words, sweet, loving words, Manjari is also making a puja. to Yuga Lakisho. With her dancing, she is making a puja, worshipping, worshipping. Prema puja. Prema pujarini, Baba is saying in some place. This is paraphernalia. Prem is paraphernalia. What is the use of all other paraphernalia if there is no prem? Pure love. So each wor word is so important because it's like an ornament. It's like an ornament which Tulasi is putting on Radhika and putting on Mohanos. It's not just the world. This is decoration. Shringar. By singing, by beautiful songs, is Shringar, Ras, is Shringar, decoration. Because it's meant for the pleasure of you, Galakish. And this is real decoration. Each movement in a dance is decoration. Not only earrings, nose pearls, necklaces, bracelets. No. Because everything is full of pure loving emotions. So sometimes devotees are talking, oh, it's too high for me. No, it's not too high. We don't want to go high. We want to go deep, to drown. We are not interested for going high, high, high. Who cares for high? But we want to go deep, to dive. And for that, we need mercy and spiritual strength also. There are so many services for which poetry must be learned. So many circumstances, situations, when Radhika and Krishna are together and proper Poetry is necessary, not any poetry, proper poetry for these circumstances, for this particular moment also, in these circumstances. So this is why we need artful services, to learn how to artfully, with full heart, artfully serve. And it only can be learned from someone who is already on that position. No other way. Sorry to say. <laughs> Sri Yugala goes rambling in the forest. Vana Vihara Lila. Not only does the maidservant soften their pathway by strewing flowers, 
not only does the maidservant soften their pathway by throwing the flowers, but she also immerses Mohan in a boundless ocean of bliss by singing self-made songs to him about Swami's glories. So we can see here, Mohan wants to listen and relish Swamini's glories, not his own glories. Swamini's glories. And the most expert in this glorification of Swamini's qualities, beauty, sweetness, and so on and so on and so on, is possible to come out only through the mouth of her beloved, intimate, most intimate maidservants. And this kind of glorification and poetry gives Mohan happiness. In Sakalpa, Kalpa Druma, 1415 verse, is said, O Swamini, when you are rambling in the forest, I will glorify you with the songs. I will make the path over which you walk soft and fragrant by scattering flowers and together with your girlfriends I will shower flowers in all directions and at every step. Then second verse, while your lover decorates you with handmade floral necklaces, sashes, armlets, earrings, and the crowns, I will again adorn you with the flower-like self-made poems. And I will also make your Rasika Sakis relish that poetry. With my Seva, I will make you happy. I will give a Krishna pleasure. But also, I give the pleasure to all your girlfriends all your sakis, because my position is always to serve everyone and to give pleasure to everyone. So there's, I remember one small story from the life of Rupa Goswami. He was very fond of meditation, one particular pastime. When in the morning, Radhika is running toward Nandishwar. And she's very passionately running because she wants to meet the Krishna and wants to give him a pleasure that he enjoy her form, her beauty, her sweetness, her qualities. And he is eagerly waiting her in front of the door of Nandishwar. 
And Rupa Goswami, like Rupa Manjari, is meditating on these pastimes, sitting in one particular place. I think the name is Tera Kandamba. Or maybe I'm wrong. And he's putting in his meditation, he's putting in his Swarup, which is not meditation, it's real Seva. He's spreading around flowers on the path where Radhika will run. Spreading the flowers and spreading the, the flavor of these flowers on this path. So Rupa Goswami, like Rupa Manjari, was absorbed so much and so long, just in this small part of this beautiful lila. And it can help us that we can see our spiritual form together with spiritual form of our Guru Manjari and slowly walking on the fingers come close and to witness, to watch this beautiful scene where Rupa Manjari is throwing the flowers and with them the flavors and this, to make this path so soft for Radhika's extraordinary soft feet. And we can see here that Radhika, while she is walking eagerly, one Manjari, Tulsi Manjari, wants to sing the songs which Radhika personally made. And all present, Sakis, Manjaris, are also drowning in this Rasika poetry. So, it's so divine, so beautiful, seen. And we are so fortunate that this window of transcendental reality is open. And who opened it? Radhika's maidservants. And who opened our eyes? Our Guru Manjar. Because meditation on these small parts of lilas are melting the heart. The kinkaris know the desire on the minds of Yugalaki Shore. And they serve them accordingly. Kinkaris know desires on the minds of Yugala Kishore. And they serve them accordingly. By reading the appropriate Rasika poetry to them. Tulasi thinks, how many maid servants don't you have? Why are you asking me this in particular?
This is the humility of Tulsi. Oh, Rade, so many other maidservants, Kinkaris, Manjaris are here. Why you are asking me to do this, Seva? She feels embarrassed. Rude, why you want that I speak something? Why you want that I cook? And it's not that only you want this is okay, but why you are talking to everyone, that everyone hear this? Like Gora Chanda said, I don't want this position to be in the center. So, Tulsi is expressing natural feeling. So many, so much of my friends are here, same age, similar age, but you just pick me. Why it's happening? She becomes, Baba is continuing, she becomes shy and lowers her head when Swamini calls her to learn beautiful and sweet poetry from her. The more one experiences Swamini's mercy, <coughs> the more one's Swarup will awaken. The more one's experience Swamini's mercy, the more one's Swarupa will awaken. This is the way how Swarup can be awakened and then modeled and finally attain perfection only through the Radhika's mercy. And Radhika's mercy is going through her representatives. And then Baba is lamenting. And he is showing how the neophytes, aspirants, should also lament. Although they are practicing their bhajan, they also should lament. Unfortunately, my Swarup is sleeping, being lullabied by external affairs. Even if I could just spend the day thinking I am Sri Radha's maidservant, it could be attained. How affectionately Swamini calls. Tulasi, won't you read? From now on, you should come every day for learning poetry from me. Swamini has written these poems herself and about herself because Divya Rasa, divine flavors, are nowhere else but in her. Shishi Radha Mohan are divine hero and heroine. And their pastimes are all called Divya Rasa, divine flavors. Reading the poetry is divine rasa, divine flavor, Divya Rasa. Singing is Divya Rasa. 
Dancing is a Divyaras. And all arts, other arts, painting is Divyaras. If it's glorification of Yugarakashar. There is no poetry as Rasika as this. The authors, writers of the scriptures on transcendental rasa <laughs> and bhakti rasa consider the rasa which is aimed, aimed in a mundane poetry to be products of materialistic minds and therefore consisting of three modes of material nature or maya. So Baba is saying there are two types of rasa, materialistic rasa, which also gives some pleasure, but for the senses and the mind. But there is another rasa, which is divya ras, transcendental ras. And it's meant for the soul, for the swarup of the soul. And through this divya ras, this swarup is serving divine divya couple. The happiness gotten from worldly rati, worldly rati, erotic love, is only slight and after due consideration ends in a misery. The rasa that comes from worldly vibhavas, excitements, is not to be cherished. Maharaj, Janandaji, you want to add something, please? If you feel, or Radha Charan, or whoever wants. I don't see Gorachanda anymore. So you are, you are talking so beautiful. I was completely observing. <laughs> <coughs> Honestly. So, and... Uh, I just, uh, from beginning, you say, Swamini more Torasi as she wanted. Well, this is actually, this is Bhakti. Actually, Gurudev want us as she want. And uh, <coughs> now in Brindaba, now spring will start and holy festival holy is now starting i think 28th is barishana's holy so this i remember just holy so each other want to color you know put put the color on your on your face on your body Sometimes splash the water with colored. One day I was, I was in, in Diksha. One boy is like splashing water in my body and kind of drowned, you know, and the colorful dhoti. <laughs> so anyway, so this also Brajabashi won't mold or colored. You know, this is my feeling. I color you my feeling. Radhika wants Mohan. No, you should color my feeling. Radhika sometimes motherly affection to color Manjari. You color my feeling. 
I want to cut out my feeling. So this is, this is actually Bhakti's essence. So Goranga Sundara Ji and Gora, Gora Chandra also say, Sometimes we are thinking, bhakti is what I want. Bhakti, actually, bhakti, no. Bhakti is what our Ishtadeva, what the Guru Dev, Guru Manjari want us to do. And this, I felt this next sentence, she blessed her maid servant with devotional service. Actually, we do, we could do devotional service. This is blessing of Radharani. Or if Guru Dev give us some seva, special seva, that is blessing of Guru Dev and our Swamini. So if we could meditate like this mood, then, then our, our bhakti go smoothly. And also I was thinking, I have lacking quality to another P bus. So actually, if we, we want to become Radha Dasi, we have to pay all respect others or any living entity. Because we say Manjari is the highest Baba she has. But actually, the true, but also in the material calculation, Manjari is the lowest servant. Saki is more higher position. Or maybe Gopi is more higher position. So, therefore, if we are really want to be a maid servant of Swamini, then if we are not humble, then we cannot be maid servant. Just to remind me, you know, to, to me, or actually, sometimes, you know, proud is coming, sometimes, you know, eh, uh, Sometimes thinking material calculation is coming, but actually, if we thinking rather dasi, then automatically this humbleness is, is coming. So this, this sentence, and also I was remembering after you inspired me, I remember Rupa Goswami made song. I think, Probably Larita Madaba or Bidagda Madaba. I'm not sure the book in Chaitanya Charita Murita. And uh, I'm not sure who is asking him to lead. Or maybe Mahaprabhu or maybe Swarupa Damodara. I'm not sure. I forgot. But uh, they request Rupa Goswami to, to lead poetry. I just remember it's not Raghunath Das Goswami. And then Rupa Goswami is singing, if we chant Krishna's holy name, just two syllable, Krishna, that syllable dancing on my tongue, and so tasty, so nectar, nectar in my kind of tongue, that kind of, you know, poetry he wrote. And then Mahaprabhu is very pleased. Maybe this bus may be opposite situation, but uh, so I remember this, this sentence. And then Rupa Goswami was very humble, very shy, like Raghunath Das Goswami. And then Mahaprabhu requests devotees, all devotees, including Nichananda, Advaita Charya, Mahaprabhu request them, please give blessing to Rupa Goswami so that she can continue to, 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 to light or, or nectarian devotional service. So just I remember this past time by your Goranga, you know, Gorang Sundaraji's inspiration, Rade Rade. Radhe Radhe Maharaj, thank you very much. Now you will be surprised. How Radhika expertly makes poetry. Baba is explaining now. 
Swamini uses the names of another hero and heroine in her romantic poems and reads them to her maidservant Tulasi, knowing her to be her closest confidant. She will not keep anything hidden in them, and she feels very happy while revealing these secrets <coughs> to her maid servants. Radhika is so happy to reveal these secrets, secret poetry, secret poetry in the mood of Parakya Baba, which she expertly is making. She is happy to reveal this secret to maidservant because she knows that her kinkari wants to receive this from her mouth, from her heart, and this is the way how kinkari will serve Radhika and her moha. Radhika knows that Manjari wants to serve, and she is giving her material. He, she is giving her the opportunity to this, and she is teaching her because she knows how much Kinkari is eager to serve according to the desire of Radhika and Mohan, only according to the desire of them. But if we go in the words, we can see also that Lalita is very aware how much Manjari wants to serve. So she is requesting Radhika, please. Sing, speak some beautiful romantic Divyaras poetry. You know, the, I don't know if I explain that we can go deeply in this, but the point is that Manjari is Seva Rupaya. All her existence. All her existence is made from Seva. She cannot live without Seva. Knowing that, Radhika inspires Manjaris to do different Sevas. This is the exchange of love. Radhika wants to serve Krishna through her Manjari. But also, she knows that Manjari is hankering, is so greedy to learn this poetry to use in the service in the proper time. So this is the relationship between Radhika and her beloved, most confident servant. And we have here the example also of Radhika, one of the most Saki's girlfriends. She also knows that. And she is requesting Radhika, please teach her this poetry, because when you are alone with your beloved Nagara, only this Tulasi can serve you in this situation. Radhe Radhe, my dear. Yes, Gorachanda. Oh, I'm still sorry. here. I just changed the device, so maybe you didn't see me. I didn't really. Please say something. And here again, we can understand how much purity is required 
Radharani she reveals the most erotic, amorous secrets in the poetry. And she uses the manjari to sing about this, to give to Mohan the most intimate, erotic feelings of Radharani. So in this situation, I have to be a stai. <laughs> I cannot go out of this mood and sing myself like a sake, no? Otherwise, Lalita could also sing with her own feelings, singing about herself towards Mohan. But no, the Manjari has the service to reveal Radharani's feelings to him. And for this, we have to be pure and fixed as thai. Otherwise, how you, how you can sing to Mohan the feelings and most erotic secrets? Of Radharani in this situation. If you are not a stai and service mood, if you slightly become enjoyer or also have the desire to <laughs> sing yourself to Mohan, na? I am the singer, I show my feelings towards him. It's not possible. You cannot be near to Radharani. So we have to be. A stai, no? This is <laughs> required. Otherwise, you cannot do it. Jaiko. Radhe, Radhe, my dear. Yes, Radhika cannot mold Tulasi. Cannot mold any manjari if she is not stai. And thank you very much because you are giving us opportunity again to come on the beginning because we should always be aware of the proper mood when we are listening the lila and like a clay we gave example of the clay clay has to be fixed on the plate when craftsmen is trying to model it. If clay is just going left and right, up and down, it's not possible. The craftsman will throw it out. But if the clay is put it, <laughs> yes, circling around, circling around, and craftsman will throw it out. What is the use of this kind of clay? Maybe it's a little bit exaggeration of the example, but Gorachanda said very nicely, fixed, and this is important, because it can be some difficult, um, not difficult, uh, this um, very, very delicate situations, which devotee has to be fixed in his Swarup. Otherwise, it's not possible. To approach you, Galaki Shor. And now Jayanandaji said something, and Baba is speaking about think this. While Sriman Mahaprabhu danced before the cart of Lord Jagannath during the Ratha Yatra at Puri, he sang the words, He is my man who took my maidenhood. From Kavya Prakasha, this song is from Kavya Prakasha, about mundane hero and heroine. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard this song, how people in Puri are singing. He is my man, 
who took my maidenhood. But immediately he turned in proper pers perspective. And who understood that? We will see now. No one else but Swarup Damodar could understand the transcendental meaning of Bhagavat Rasa, the Lord found in these words. <laughs> Someone who is deeply absorbed in Bhagavat Rasa, even in Mandarin poetry, mundane singing, can take the essence, transcendent, the spiritual essence. When mundane hero and heroine are engaged in their loving exchange, he will always see Radha and Krishna. He will always hear Radha and Krishna. And I remember Gurudev was speaking how when he was in Samadhi and his uh, wife tried to bring him in the cinema to make him a little bit conscious about the external world. Whatever he saw on the screen in the cinema, he saw Radha and Krishna. He didn't <laughs> see any worldly actor or actors, hero or heroes. And he was crying in the cinema. So it was useful, <laughs> useless attempt to put him out of this consciousness because he saw Divya Rasa everywhere. And this is the situation, this is the position of all Rasic devotees. And we need their help and we, de we need their affection. Actually, Baba, he was writing, no? the mundane love stories, they consist of the three modes of nature. It's Maya, like this, like that. But, you know, there is this kind of music in every country is the same. In all languages is the same. Like how I met you the first time <coughs> and when we walked in the park and we sat at the ocean and we watched the stars and then i remember our first embrace like this kind of music is everywhere this not very deep love songs pop culture thing but if you have the right mood the right perspective you can enjoy that kind of music also sometimes i listen that no old english love songs like I can really enjoy thinking of Radha and Mohan, no? How they, how they, no? All the pop songs, all the love songs, they become a little relishable also with the right perspective. <laughs> so, if you are triggered by the Divya Rasa, no, then you can see it everywhere, even in the mundane Rasa, because you have not the enjoying tendency. You are only the viewer, not the doer. <laughs> like, wow. But the songs I like very much, no? The stars and you and me and forever and the moonshine and everything was so nice. I can think about Radha and Krishna, no? It's really <laughs> amazing. Radha. <coughs> yes, Maharaj, please. So at first, uh, I was reading Chaitanya Charita Murita, and this verse Baba mentioned, uh, Kabbya Prakasha. When I was young, my lover steal my heart. That person appear again in the bank of Rebati River. You are same that person, I'm same such and such, but I cannot have in that mood in, in, in my youth because place is different 
and your clothes is different, your mood is different. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was singing in front of a card in that song, Monday songs. And then at that time, I could feel something, but in this Lira, in this Birapaks Manjari, again appear. So means Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Lira and Krishna Lira is very mutually very connected. And this, I can see Mahaprabhu actually Radha. Without Radha's feeling, we cannot understand. So Gora Chandra is very mentioned nice things. If we, ha we don't have Stai Baba as Manjari, we can let it different way, maybe. What we are feeling, oh, I'm doer, I'm enjoyer, this kind of tendency. So I just do this bus actually, and then after he decide, so maybe later on explain, Baba explain. So Mahaprabhu singing and everybody was, was wondering why Mahaprabhu singing this mundane love story. But actually this kind of Parakya Baba, kind of hidden way, because Sadhu, Rashka Vaishnava, does not say straight wordly. Like a little bit crooked way. So this just Radharani is mentioned. Swamini used the name of another hero and heroine in her romantic poem and leads them to her maid servant. So that's it. Only maid servant could understand what, the, what is meaning. So similarly, of course, Swarupa Damana is Rareta Saki. Uh, he, he, she's different, you know, she's, she's literally different, but uh, Rupa Manjari only understand. Many devotees around the Ratiatora festival, maybe hundreds or maybe thousands, but nobody understand because nobody is at that time style. Nobody is not Tadamika with Mahaprabhu. Or radicals feeling. So this is a very interesting point, which Gora Sundaraji and, you know, Gora Chandra mentioned. This is very beautiful. And at that time, honestly, reading Mahaprabhu's pastime, I understand Radha's feeling to some extent. But if now I'm reading, oh my God, so much correspondence. <laughs> Radha, Radha. Thank you, Maharaj. It's so nice to share with all of you. So we are continuing. When Sri Rupa Goswami heard these words from the Lord's divine mouth, he understood the Lord's inner bhava and revealed it by writing the words Priya Soyam Krishna He is my beloved Krishna He is my beloved Krishna Wordly song is going He is my man But Rupa Goswami understood the feelings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he entered in the mood of Radha Bhava. And when he is singing this worldly song, actually he is thinking and feeling on his beloved Krishna. He is my beloved Krishna who took my maidhood. When the Lord found these words, or the palm leaf on the roof of Haridas Thakur's cottage. He asked Rupa, no one could understand the meaning of my words. How did you know the feelings on my mind? Saying this, 
he bestowed great mercy upon Shirupa and showed the words to Swarup Damodar. In amazement, the Lord asked Swarup, How did Rupa know what was on my mind? And Swarup Damodar replied, I know that only someone who has received your grace can know what is in your mind. Then Lord said, I am satisfied with him, with Sri Rupa. Then he embraced Sri Rupa and empowered him completely, saying, he is qualified to understand the confidential rasa. Tell him everything about the glories of these confidential flavors. I will repeat this again because there is meanings behind this. Swarup Damodar replied, I know that only someone who has received your grace can know what is in your mind. And the Lord said, I am satisfied with him. Yasya prasado Bhagavad prasad. I am satisfied with him. Then he embraced Sri Rupa and empowered him completely. Gave him complete mercy, complete package of mercy. He is qualified to understand the confidential rasa. Tell him everything about the glories of this confidential flavors. Paraki Abhava Mood. So we why I'm reading again this words because is when we receive instruction, this is one kind of blessings, one kind of grace to receive instruction. Do this and this. But it's not complete blessings. Guru wants to see eagerness in the heart of disciple that he really wants to do and follow this instruction, to fulfill this instruction and his desires. And the more disciple is eager to fulfill these instructions, he is giving more mercy and more. And finally, when he sees the disciple is burning from desire to satisfy him. Yasya Prashad. Then he is giving him more and more and more and more blessings. So this process of giving mercy is also some kind of gradual. Mercy is there, yes. But it's also we need to be ready to receive complete quality, quantity of this mercy. And I remember Rupa Goswami met first time Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I don't know where, some Prayag or South India, I forgot. And he immediately gave him instructions, explanations and instructions. But it was just the beginning of relationship. And when 
Rupa Goswami became more and more close in his heart with Goranga. He started to understood his heart by Goranga's mercy. And I remember there is a Lila when he was praying to Goranga and said, Okay, you gave me instructions, you gave me blessings, but please now you give me complete mercy that I can fulfill your instructions according to your blessings. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was so happy, and then he put his lotus feet on his head. Embrace him. Now you are ready to do it. So this process of receiving the mercy is also needs a time. And humility. Someone who is not enough humble like me is always passion. But this is not a sign of humility. So we can see here that Goranga gave Rupa complete mercy. Now you are qualified. I am giving you mercy that you can understand to feel everything about science of rasa, tattva, because I have special instruction and task for you. I think it's too late. It's it's very sad. <laughs> <laughs> Happy and sad. <laughs> I want to mention one thing. Yes, on please. The other, on the please other please. page, you were reading that as more we experience Radharani's mercy, our Swarup will awaken. And how we experience Radharani's mercy is coming through Gurudev. He is working that out by following instructions, first instructing us to do certain things, to engage our sadhaka deha, ne, to be in the service, put our mind in that, and the purification process start. And ne, he is molding us. Ne? Also sadhaka deha, engage outside, bringing from outside more and inside, like and giving mercy, drops of mercy, seeing the eagerness of the disciple to follow, and then giving more deep instructions, instructing about bhajan or read certain poems of Narutam Das, or like, no, he is doing that. We are receiving the mercy of Radharani through Gurudev. And then our Swarup will awake. This is very deeply connected that <laughs> Radharani using the Manjari as an instrument to serve Krishna. So Radharani also using her Dasi in the form of Sri Guru, also using Guru Manjari as an instrument to teach us. Yes. My dear Goranga Sunna, thank you very much for your Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Sharing. We can stop My here. My embrace and dandava to all of you. I'm sorry if I, we made some mistakes. When I'm talking, mistakes are including. <laughs> so please, tolerant be. And I don't know if Gurudev is here or no. I will try to see him. Goranga, maybe he is here. Sorry? 
Radharada, maybe Guru Dev is here. Yeah, really. I don't so, know, but you can, see, you can ask him. <laughs> I, I ask him, but <laughs> no answer. He is always with us. Yes, that's we should, true. We should hear him. We should feel him. And we should allow him to model us. <laughs> okay. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you very much again. Thank you very much. And Radhe, Radhe. Hoping to see you soon.